I always thought there's this place where air and earth meets. There's this power point. I want it to be there. I want to eat it up. I want it to be chewed up by that power. That's why I wanted to be a lookout. I read the Dharma Bums, Kerouac about Snyder. Those are the beats. Those are the inspirations for me to want to be a lookout. After the beatniks and the peaks, you had the hippies in the woods. The general idea, making money was bad. Following your muse was good. My thing is I wanted to spend as much time as I wanted and not go down. Every 15 minutes you were supposed to scan 45 degrees of, of what you could see and look everywhere to see if there's any smoke. You watch the build-up, thunderheads forming. You see lightning strike, if it's nearby, you'll see flame. Then you have to call it in to the base, the color of the smoke, what you think is burning, what distance it is, how large it is. Then you might have smoke jumpers fly in and parachute down to the fire. You'd be a communication relay with the plane to the ranger station because in those days you didn't have repeaters yeah, right. on the mountaintops. And then you might have a crew from the ranger station hiking into a fire that you could see, but they're crawling through the forest trying to find it, yeah. trying to get them there. It's much easier for the lookout than it is for the crew. I think my first time it was coming down all over me. I'd see trees explode and then burst into flame. It was very cool and terrifying because you're higher than it and all the metal in the lookout would be buzzing with the electrical charge. I remember touching the firefinder when we got struck by lightning and the hairs on my leg did this little... They all went up and they all came down and the electricity ran through me. It was like... I like zip and unzip. Then when I got off in the evening, maybe go for a walk if the weather was nice. And little things like breakfasts and meals were a big deal. A lot of dried food, a lot of pancakes, a lot of reading. Fairly um, disciplined reading. Yeah, Woody Guthrie's book, Bound for Glory. I was reading a lot of Zen poetry and a lot of philosophy, Oriental philosophy. And that was part of the ambiance of the Northwest in those days. Mm -hmm. I kept this little journal. We have this daily log, and at the end I'd write little notes about the day. This book I wrote about my time out there, I, I framed it in an interview with a reporter, and then in between I interspersed all these things, little essays. I was into meditation, Buddhist meditation at the time. Watch the animals. Watch the trees grow. Was my domain. I used to drag the mattress out on calm starry nights, watch the stars, I look for the northern lights. Oh, there were so many things to do and watch. <laughs> it gave me a chance to live a simple life, cutting wood, fetching water, doing without, observing the natural world and finding that's enough. Experiencing time, trying to feel time at a glacial pace. It got wacky, man, <laughs> but that's what I was there for, to get away from the society that is telling us what to be, how to act all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, a chance to, to find who we really are, and not me as a person, but, you know, what the true human condition is. Soul searching, wonderful stuff. We don't get any chances in our life to do this, and we're bombarded with stimuli constantly that we, we never get a chance. And that's why I would recommend being a lookout to everybody for you know, <laughs> just a week for everybody to get totally away, mm. to get bored, see what happens.